resetting the neck on a banjo. Say what? All right, welcome back, folks. Yeah, uh, wow. Resetting the neck on a banjo. It's completely, totally different from guitars is. I'll tell you that up front. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> I'll show you the whole thing, man. I used to play one of these things for like 33, maybe 35 years. I played it, and I played it, uh, I mean, what's the word? All the time. <laughs> Religiously, maybe is the word. I played it all the time, man. Used to stay home from school to get to play the banjo. And when I did go to school, first thing I do when I get home is get the banjo out and play it. And I got one video up on this channel. If you want to just search banjo and it'll come up. And uh, my cousin that owns that K guitar that I've been working on, he's in that video. He's playing bass and singing lead. And then it's, of course, my dad playing the guitar, that Dove guitar. Y'all have seen it on the channel here before. Uh, that's the only video I've got. I've got uh, hundreds of videos of us playing and bands that I was in and stuff and I played the banjo I'm talking about all on VHS tapes. <laughs> so if I can figure out how to convert them over some of them, well I know how to do it. I just uh, have to dig through the tapes, like 50 of them, to find whatever I'm looking for. They're not, some of them's labeled, not all of them. Anyways, reset the neck on the banjo and stop blowing, man. I'm going to get you. I'm going to come over there and get you and bring you over here. I can tell you anything you want to know about these things. So, uh, get your smoke out, roll one, your beer, your coffee, or whatever it is you do this time of night. It's nighttime here. And uh, come closer and we'll get into it. I'll show you what I know. I know about everything in art to banjos. And I'll explain how you reset the neck on a banjo. All right, welcome back, folks. Thank you for tuning in and keeping it here. I do appreciate it. This is man. This banjo is uh, it's a nice banjo, man. It's got the uh, I think they're eleven to one tuning ratio on on the two keys, the uh, first and the fourth. The second, third, it's got the Scrugg style uh, locking tuners. I'll just show them to you. Maybe some of you guys that play guitar have never seen these before. I think I got it in the camera. I haven't learned how to work this camera very good yet. These keys. See, they have screws here and on the side, up here and on the side. They're not set. <laughs> Anyways, you've heard Scruggs tune while he was playing. He's got songs like uh, Flint Hill Special. He tunes the banjo in, in the song. And uh, that's the way he was able to do that. Why is it upside down? And crazy things are happening, man. All right, there are four, four of those, you can see that, four of those hold the resonator on this banjo, a lot of the old ones only had three screws in it, that's what the inside looks like, your sound hits that, you can tell how it's rounded, you know, egg shape. They're designed so the sound comes off of the bridge here and hits this and then comes out of all these holes around the side of the banjo. What am I going to do with this? Resetting the neck. I just reset the neck on this banjo today. And I was actually putting it back together and I thought, damn, I should have made a video of that. I'm not going to do it now because it's done. <laughs> I'll get you and bring you over here and show you this. You have two, they call these coordinator rods. There's two of them in almost every banjo. Every one that's, uh, you know, fairly expensive will have two of those in there. There's uh, locking nuts on both ends back here. Uh, this one, I don't think it goes clear through. This top one does. Now your neck here has got two lag bolts in it. About, I don't know, three or four inches long. And the lag bolts, it's got like a wood screw threads on them. It goes into the, the neck, the heel here. And on the other side, it has a finer thread. It's a 1032 thread that I'm, I have to get you to show you this. I don't think you can see this adjustment right here. But uh, that screws onto the 1032 threads. But like I say, the other end is like a wood screw. They call them light bolts and they call these coordinator rods. This is the pot. This is the flange. 
and of course the neck and the fifth string key and all that jazz. Okay, I'll get you bring you over here. I can explain that better to you. Hold on. There's what the tuners look like that I was just talking about. You can see the set screws in them to adjust to lock them with. That only lets them one screw lets them tune down so far and it locks. The other one lets it tune up so far and it locks. Of course, it's got the geared fifth string peg on it. Not all banjos have that either. All right, the guts of the thing. There's that adjustment I was telling you. I didn't think you could see it from over there. <laughs> Ideally, you want the heel of a banjo to fit against this part perfectly. And as you can see there, this one is tight up against it. And like I say, you have these two coordinator rods uh, lock nuts locking nuts back here there's another one on this side of that one and i never had this out i just adjusted it today but i don't know I, some banjos this inner one goes clear through and it's got a locking thing back here too i don't think this one does because i can feel the tailpiece right there and the tailpiece is held on by this bracket right here which also serves as tuning the head if you have to tune the head okay these little holes in here see they got little holes one there uh, one right there, I think. Yeah, this has only got one in it right there. What that's for is once you get all this stuff loosened up, the locking nuts. They make a tool for it. I always just stuck a uh, little tiny nail in there, you know, and turn these with, and that's where you get your adjustment at. The way that is right now, I would have to loosen this, okay? And I can't pull the thing back, you know. I loosen this and then tighten this one. To pull this heel back or I can loosen this one here on the bottom and loosen that rod turn it counterclockwise and it would shove the front of the neck up here away from this rim hoop see what I mean let's say there was a big gap right here and I wanted to close it up I would have to loosen this because this locks everything so loosen that to close that gap, then I'd stick a, a loose this back here too. And then I'd have to stick a uh, a nail or the tool, if I had the tool, I don't have it, never, did, never had it. I can't believe I never did in all the years I played these things. But uh, loosen this and then I'd stick a nail in there and start turning this clockwise, okay? See, that would draw this back. And like I say, you got two options. You can either do that or use this one to shove the front of the neck away from the banjo and in some cases you got to you know do both of them to get what you need i didn't have to fool with this one much today i only adjusted this one here and uh, this i always like to see that on banjos when you get one where the heel meets the pot like that that well i mean i don't know if i can zoom you in and show you it's it's as tight against the pot as you're going to get it maybe you can see it from the side better i don't think enough light of course man it's something all the time isn't it uh, people tune the heads differently on banjos I always started right here and I do like uh, this one and that one and this one and the second one back over there then the third one back here and the third one back over there and you know work my way down that way keep it nice and even a lot of people use this torque wrenches to do that I never did I just uh, kind of count the threads as I turn it and tap the head to see what tunes it's in. But anyways, that's the way you reset a neck on a banjo. It's easy, there's no glue. Banjo has very little bit of glue on the entire instrument. This is a tone ring down here. It's shiny, as you see there. That's a tone ring, it's got 20 holes. That's standard for most banjos, but they don't all have 20 holes. Some of them don't have any holes. Some of them, uh, this is a flathead banjo. Some of them are arch tops. And uh, you know, just all kinds of differences in them, man. All kinds of things different. Anyways, that's the way you reset the neck. That's what these two rods are for. They, uh, the ro rods are hooked to those lag bolts that I was telling you about. They're threaded, 1032 thread on the end. This is threaded, this uh, rod is threaded on the inside. So, you know, it'll screw up onto the end of that uh, 1032 thread. And this one, of course, is threaded on the outside because it screws into that locking nut. But uh, basically, you use this back here to lock it down with. There's another one on this side, as I said. I don't know if you can see it or not. It's dark back there. 
and use those to lock everything down you know once you get the neck where you want it here and the only way to adjust from side to side is carve you know from from the heel all the way up to this hoop you got to carve it to move the neck you know this way from one side to the other moving it this way with these rods and that's the way they work and that's the way you reset a neck on a banjo <laughs> boy this is heavy man this thing is super super heavy see that just lays down in there like that and you put these four screws back in it I'll show you again what they look like maybe you can see yeah I think you can see that and like I say a lot of bandos only have three I've got an old uh, well, I gave it to my son it's an old Gibson RB250 it's, it's an arch top banjo a 1956 model we thought it was a 59 model my dad bought it in 1959 and we thought you know it's a 59 model well years and years later down the road I called gave him the numbers off of it they said no that man a 56 I think that's what he said a 56 or a 54 Man, this is going to be a pain so I'm not going to hold you here for all this it takes a little bit to get this one back in I almost had it together and I thought, I'm going to make a video of this. <laughs> oh, I remember. I'm going to lift the thing up. The armrest is right in the way there to get that started. And there she is. It's in tune. And it's almost together. I think she'll be okay now. A fresh new neck reset on a banjo of all things. But yeah, you got to do them once in a while. I don't want to get those too tight because they tend to lock on there after if you don't have them apart for a long, very long time. They get very hard. And you don't want to use pliers or any kind of a tool on, tool on them. Two will. There she is. know I played one for 33 years or 35 however long it's been you would not know it man the way I play it and slump all, all over it now <laughs> well, I remember everything I just can't get these to work I just like uh, guitars and everything else, you know, it's all got to do with how you play your action, how you want your action set. And it's also got to do with the height of your bridge. You can get different uh, size bridges, you know, whether you have a 3 8 or a, a half inch or a 5 16 they make them all different sizes. You know, and it depends a lot on the height of the ridge. I always like that about a half inch on my banjos. And, uh, you know, that, that sets it up high enough where you can adjust this tailpiece down and get more tension down on the bridge. And uh, it just sounds better. I think they sound better like that. I don't know what this, I think this is a half inch on this one. I'm not really sure. It looks bigger than that. Anyways, that's the way you reset an neck on a banjo. It's got to be done, <laughs> you know, just like guitars, but there's no glue involved. And I love that, man. I'm sick of doing guitar neck resets. I hope, you know, if I never had to do another one the rest of my life, it wouldn't bother me. I'd be pleased with that, you know? I, I don't like doing it, man. A lot of people say, well, Luther, I'll tell you, you need a neck reset to make money, you know? No, I don't do it for money. I don't do it at all if I can get out of it. And uh, with my shaky hands and draw up and stuff, you know, I can't see anymore. I, I may not do any more neck resets, I don't know. There are several on the channel here if you want to look them up and see the difference after you watch this video, the difference in it and resetting the guitar on the neck. Totally, totally different. Big job on a guitar. Just a few minutes on the banjo. Thanks for watching. 
Hope you uh, learned something from this, and I'll see you next time. Over and out. So I shut the camera down, put everything away, and I uh, remembered I didn't put the trick on this video. The trick is, a lot of y'all been asking me in a bunch of different videos if I can make that uh, $100 bill come back. I told you about the guy's lip quivered, and he said, can you make it come back? <laughs> Actually, I can. Sometimes I can make them come back. Not all the time, but I'll try it for you now. I don't have anything in my hands. I'm just going to reach down in my my hand here and try to get a hold of something. I've got something. I don't know what it is, but it's coming. Wow, this is weird. I'm not sure what it is, folks. Not a hundred dollar bill. Oh, I see what it is now. Get it unfolded here a little bit. Get these fucking hands to work. Look how that goes. It's a two fifties that came back. So, is that okay?